ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वील कंटिन्यू आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम द नेक्टर ऑफ डिवोशन बाशिला प्रभुपाद ओरिजिनली भक्ति रिसामृत सिंधु बाय रूप गोस्वामी मुखम करोति बाचालम पंगुम लंघयते गिरिम पितृपात हम वंदे श्री गुरुम दीन तारिणम परमानंद माधवम श्री चैतन्य ईश्वरम हरिम तत्सम चैप्टर एटीन character of one in ecstatic love rupa goswami next describes the characteristics of a person who has actually developed his ecstatic love for krishna the characteristics are as follows he is always anxious to utilize his time in the devotional service of lord he does not like to da- to be idle he wants service always 24 hours a day without deviation second he is always reserved and perseverant third he is always detached from all material attraction fourth he does not long for any material respect in return for his activities fifth he is always certain that krishna will bestow his mercy upon him sixth he is always eager to serve the lord faithfully seventh he is very much attached to the chanting of the holy name of the lord eighth he is always eager to describe the transcendental qualities of the lord ninth he is very pleased to live in a place where the lord's pastimes are performed for example mathura vrindavan or dwarka utilization of time and an unalloyed devote, devotee who has developed ecstatic love for krishna is always engaging his words in reciting prayers to the lord within the mind he is always thinking of krishna and with his body he either offers obeisances by bowing down before the deity or engages in some other service during these ecstatic serv- activities he sometimes sheds tears in this way his whole life is engaged in the service of the lord with not a moment wasted on any other engagement perseverance when a person is undisturbed even in the presence of various causes of disturbance he is called reserved and perseverant an example of this perseverance and reservation is found in the behavior of king parikshit as described in this first canto 19th chapter verse 15 of shrimad bhagavatam the king says there to all the sages present before him at the time of his death my dear brahmanas you should always accept me as your surrendered servant i have come to the bank of the ganges just to devote my heart and soul unto the lotus feet of lord krishna so please bless me that mother ganges may always be pleased with me let the curse of the brahmana's son fall upon me i do not mind i only request that at the last moment of my life all of you kindly chant the holy name of vishnu so that i may realize his transcendental qualities this example of maharaj parikshit's behavior his remaining patient even at the last point of his life his undisturbed condition of mind is an example of reservation this is one of the characteristics of a devotee who has developed ecstatic love for krishna detachment the senses are always desiring sense enjoyment but when a devotee develops transcendental love for krishna his senses are no longer attracted by material desires this state of mind is called detachment there is a nice example of this detachment in connection with the character of king bharat in the fifth canto fourth chapter verse 43 of shrimad bhagavatam it is stated emperor bharat was so attracted by the beauty of the lotus feet of krishna that even in his youthful life he gave up all kinds of attachment to family children friends kingdom etc as though they were untouchable stools emperor bharat provides a typical example of detachment he had everything enjoyable in the material life but he left it this means that detachment does not mean artificially keeping oneself aloof and apart from the allurements of attachment even in the presence of such allurements if one can remain unattracted by material attachments he is called detached in the beginning of course a neophyte devotee must try to keep himself apart from all kinds of alluring attachments but the real position of a mature devotee is that even in the presence of all allurements he is not at all attracted this is the actual criterion of detachment pridelessness When a devotee in spite of possessing all the qualities of pure realization is not proud of his position he is called prideless in the padma purana it is stated that king bhagirath was the emperor above all other kings yet he developed such ecstatic love for krishna that he became mendicant and went out begging 
even to the homes of his political enemies and untouchables. He was so humble that he respectfully bowed down before them. There are many instances in the history of India. Even very recently, about 200 years ago or less, one big landlord known as Lal Babu, a Calcutta landlorder, holder, became a Vaishnav and lived in Vrindavan. He was also begging from door to door, even at the homes of his political enemies. Begging involves being ready to be insulted by persons to whose home one has come. That is natural, but one has to tolerate such insults for the sake of Krishna. The devotee of Krishna can accept any position in the service of Krishna. Great hope. The strong conviction that one will certainly receive the favor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is called in Sanskrit Ashaband. Ashaband means to continue to think because I am trying my best to follow the routine principles of devotional service. I am sure that I will go back to Godhead, back to home. In this connection, one prayer by Rupa Goswami is sufficient to exemplify this hopefulness. He says, I have no love for Krishna nor for the causes of developing love for Krishna, namely hearing and chanting, and the process of Bhakti Yoga by which one is always thinking of Krishna and fixing his lotus feet in the heart is also lacking in me. As far as philosophical knowledge or pious works are concerned, I do not see any opportunity for me to execute such activities. But above all, I am not even born of a nice family. Therefore, I must simply pray to you, Gopijan Vallabh Krishna, maintainer and beloved of the gopis. I simply wish and hope that some way or other I may be able to approach your lotus feet and this hope is giving me pain because I think myself quite incompetent to approach that transcendental goal of life. That the purpose is that under this heading of Asha Bandh, one should continue to hope against hope that some way or other he will be able to approach the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord eagerness for achieving the desired success. When one is sufficiently eager to achieve success in the devotional service, that eagerness is called samutkantha. This means complete eagerness. Actually, this eagerness is the price for achieving success in Krishna consciousness. Everything has some value and one has to pay the value before obtaining or possessing it. It is stated in Vedic literature that to purchase the most valuable thing Krishna consciousness, one has to develop intense eagerness for achieving success. This intense eagerness is very nicely expressed in Bilumangal by Bil Mangal Thakur in his book Krishna Karnamrita. He says, I am eagerly waiting to see the boy of Vrindavan whose bodily beauty is captivating the whole universe, whose eyes are always bounded by black eyebrows and expanded like lotus petals and who is always eagerly glancing over his devotees and therefore moving slightly here and there. His eyes are always moist, his lips are colored like copper and through those lips there comes a sound vibration which drives me madder than a mad elephant. I want so much to see him at Vrindavan. Attachment to chanting the holy name of, names of the Lord. In the same Krishna Karnamrita there is another statement about the chanting of Radharani. It is said by the one of the associates of Radharani, O oh Lord Govinda, that girl who is a daughter of King Vrishvanu is now shedding tears and she is anxiously chanting your holy name, Krishna, Krishna. Eagerness to describe the Lord's transcendental qualities. Attachment for chanting the glories of the Lord is also expressed in the Krishna Karnamrita as follows. What shall I do for Krishna who is pleasing beyond all pleasurable conceptions and who is naughtier than all restless boys? The idea of Krishna's beautiful activities is attracting my heart and I don't know what I can do. Attraction for living in a place where Krishna has his pastimes. In the book Padyavali by Rupa Goswami, there is a following statement about Vindavan. In this place, the son of Maharaj Nand used to live with his father who was king of all coward men. In this place, Lord Krishna broke the cart in which Shak Shakata Sur demon was concealed. At this place, Damodar, who can cut the knot of our material existence, was tied up by his mother, Yashoda. A pure devotee of Lord Krishna resides in the district of Mathura or Vindavan and visits all the places where Krishna's pastimes were performed. At these sacred places, Krishna displayed his childhood activities with the coward boys and mother Yashoda. The system of circumambulating all these places is still current among devotees of Lord Krishna and those coming to Mathura and Vrindavan always feel transcendental pleasure. Actually, if someone goes to Vrindavan, 
he will immediately feel separation from Krishna, who performed such a nice activities when he was present there. Such attraction for remembering Krishna's activities is known as attachment for Krishna. There are impersonalist philosophers and mystics, however, who by a show of devotional service just wanted ultimately to merge into the existence of the Supreme Lord. They sometimes try to imitate a pure devotee sentiment for visiting the holy places where Krishna had his pastimes, but they simply have a view of salvation and so their activities cannot be considered attachment. It is said by Rupa Goswami that the attachment exhibited by pure devotees for Krishna cannot be possibly be perfected by the hearts of fruitive work workers, that is the karmis or the mental speculators, because such statements in pure Krishna consciousness is very rare and not possible to achieve even for many liberated persons. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, liberation from material contamination is the stage at which devotion service can be achieved. For instance, who simply wants to have liberation and to merge into the impersonal Brahma Jyoti, attachment to Krishna is not possible to acquire. This attachment is very confidentially kept by Krishna and is bestowed only upon pure devotees. Even ordinary devotees can have such pure attachment for Krishna. Therefore, how is it possible for success to be achieved by persons whose hearts are contaminated by the actions and reactions of fruitive activities and who are entangled by various types of mental speculation? There are many so-called devotees who artificially think of Krishna's pastimes known as Ashtaka, Lika, Leela. Sometimes one may artificially imitate these pretending that Krishna is talking with him in front of a boy or else one may pretend that Radharani and Krishna both have come to join in and are talking about him. Such characteristics are sometimes exhibited by the impersonalist class of men and they may captivate Some innocent persons who have no knowledge in the science of devotional service. However, as soon as an experienced devotee sees all these caricatures, he can immediately evaluate such rascaldom. If such a pretender is sometimes seen possessing imitative attachment to Krishna, that will not be accepted as real attachment. It may be said, however, that such attachment gives the pretender hope that he may eventually rise onto the actual platform of pure devotional service. This imitative attachment can be divided into two headings, namely shadow attachment and para or the transcendental attachment. If someone without undergoing the regulative principles of devotional service or without being guided by a bona fide spiritual master shows such imitative attachment, this is called shadow attachment. Sometimes it is found that a person actually attached to material enjoyment or salvation has the good fortune to associate with the pure devotees while they are engaged in chanting the holy name of the Lord. By the good grace of the Lord, one may also cooperate and join in the chanting at the same time. Simply by the association of such pure devotees, the moon-like rays from their heart reflect on him. And by the influence of the Pure devotees, he may show some likeness of attachment caused by inquisitiveness, but this is very flickering. And if by the manifestation of such shadow attachment one feels the disappearance of all material pangs, then it is called para attachment. Such shadow attachment or para attachment can develop if one associates with a pure devotee or visits holy places like Vrindavan or Mathura. And if an ordinary man develops such attachment for Krishna and fortunately performs devotional activities in the association of pure devotees, he can also rise to the platform of pure devotional service. The conclusion is that transcendental attachment is so powerful that if such attachment is seen manifested even in some common man by the association of a pure devotee, it can bring one to the perfectional stage. But such attachment for Krishna cannot be invoked in a person without is being sufficiently blessed by the association of pure devotees. And as attachment can be involved, invoked by the association of pure devotees, so attachment can also be extinguished by offenses committed at the lotus feet of pure devotees. To be more clear, by the association of pure devotees, attachment for Krishna can be aroused, but if one commits offenses at the lotus feet of a devotee, one's shadow attachment or 
but our attachment can be extinguished. This extinguishing is like the waning of the full moon, which gradually decreases and at last becomes dark. One should therefore be very careful with, while associating with pure devotees to guard against committing an offense at the lotus feet. Transcendental attachment, either shadow or para, can be nullified by different degrees of offenses at the lotus feet of pure devotees. Almost nil, and if the Offense is not very serious. One's attachment can become second class or third class. If someone becomes attached to the principles of salvation or to merging into the existence of the Brahmachyoti, his ecstasies gradually diminish and diminish uh, into shadow and para attachment, or else transform into the principles of. Abhangra ho pasana. This Ahangra ho pasana describes a living entity when he begins spiritual realization by identifying himself with the Supreme Lord. This statement, state of self-realization is technil, technically known as monism. The monist thinks himself one with the Supreme Lord. Thus, because he does not differentiate between himself and the Supreme Lord, it is his view that by worshipping him, worshiping himself, he is worshiping the Supreme Lord. Sometimes it is found that a new conception. Sometimes it is found that neophyte is taking part in chanting and dancing very enthusiastically, but within himself he is under the impression that he has become one with the Supreme Hope. This conception of monism is completely different from pure transcendental devotional service. If, however, it is seen that a person has developed a high standard of devotion without having undergone even the regulative principles. It is to be understood that his status of devotional service was achieved in former life. For some reason or other, it, it had been temporarily stopped, most probably by an offence committed at the lotus feet of a devotee. Now with a good second chance, it has begun, again begun to develop. This conclusion is that steady progress in devotional service can be attained only in the association of pure devotees. If one can gradually advance his status in devotional service, this is understood to be due to the causeless mercy of Krishna himself. If a person is completely detached from material enjoyment and has developed pure ecstatic devotion, even if he is sometimes accidentally found not giving living up to the standard of devotional service, one should not be envious of him. It is confirmed also in Bhagavad Gita, that of devotee who has unflinching faith in the devotion to the Lord, even if sometimes found to be accidentally deviated from pure devotional characteristics, should still be counted among the pure unflinching faith in devotional service in Lord Krishna and in the spiritual master makes one highly elevated in the activities of devotional service. In the Nrsinga Puran, it is said, if a person has completely engaged his mind, body and activities in the service of the Supreme Godhead, but externally he is found to be engaged in some abominable activities. These abominable activities will surely be very quickly vanquished by the influence of his staunch devotional force. The example is given that on a full moon there are some spots which may appear to be pockmarked. Still, the illumination spread by the full moon cannot be checked. Similarly, a little fault in the mind midst of volumes of devotional service is not at all to be counted as a fault. Attachment for Krishna is transcendental bliss. Amid unlimited volumes of transcendental bliss, a spot of some material defect cannot act in any way. Chapter 19, Devotional Service in Pure Love of God. When one's desire to love Krishna in one's particular relationship becomes intensified, this is known as pure love of Godhead. In the beginning, a devotee is engaged in the regulative principles of devotional service by the law order of his spiritual master. When one thereby becomes completely purified of all material contamination, there develops an attachment and taste for devotional service. This taste and attachment, when gradually intensified in the course of time, becomes love. The word love can be actually applied only in relationship with the personality of Godhead. In the material world, love is not applicable at all. What goes on under the name of love in the material world is nothing but lust. There is a gulf of difference between love and lust, like the difference between gold and iron. In the Narad Pancharatra, it is clearly stated that when lust is completely transferred to the Supreme Godhead and the concept of kinship is completely reposed in him, such is accepted as pure love of God. 
by great authorities like Bhishma, Pranad, Uddhav and Narad. Great authorities like Bhishma have explained that love of Godhead means completely giving up all so-called love for any other person. According to Bhishma, love means reposing one's affection completely upon one person, withdrawing all affinities for any other person. This pure love can be transferred to the Supreme Personality of Godhead under two conditions, out of ecstasy and out of the causeless mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. Ecstasy. Ecstatic love of Godhead can be potently, potently invoked simply by following the rules and regulations of devotional service as they are prescribed in scriptures under the direction of bona fide spiritual master in the 11th canto, 2nd chapter, verse 40 of Srimad Bhagavatam. This ecstatic love born of execution of regulative devotional service is explained. A devotee in the course of his executing the regulative principles of devotional service develops his natural Krishna consciousness and being thus softened at the heart, he chants and dances like a madman while performing chanting of the holy name of the Lord. He sometimes cries, sometimes talks wildly, sometimes sings and sometimes without caring for any outsider dances like a madman. In the Padma Puran, there is a statement about ecstatic love Born of spontaneous affection, Chandrakanti and a celebrated fair-faced girl rigidly observed celibacy in order to obtain Krishna as her husband. She always engaged herself in meditating on the transcendental form of the Lord and always chanted the glories of the Lord. She did not desire to accept anyone else as her husband. She had firmly decided that only Lord would be her husband. The Lord's extraordinary mercy when a devotee is found to be always associated with the Lord in ecstatic love, it is understood that such a position has been awarded. By the Lord himself out of his causeless extraordinary mercy, an example of such extraordinary mercy is given in the 11th canto, 12th chapter, verse 7 of Srimad Bhagavatam, wherein Lord Krishna tells Uddhav, the gopis in Vrindavan did not study the Vedas to achieve me, nor had they ever been in the holy places of pilgrimage, nor did they devoutly execute any regulative principle, nor did they undergo any kind of of austerity, it is simply by my association that they have attained the highest perfection of the devotional service from the example of Chandrakanti as found in Padmapuran and from the example of Gopis as found in Srimad Bhagavatam. It appears that a devotee who always thinks of Krishna and who always chants his glories in ecstatic love, regardless of his condition, will attain the highest perfection of unalloyed devotional love due to Lord Krishna's extraordinary mercy. This is confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam. If a person worships, adores and loves Hari, the Supreme Lord, he should be understood to have finished all kinds of austerities, penances and similar processes for self-realization. On the other hand, if after undergoing all types of austerities, penances and mystic yoga practices, one does not develop such love for Hari, then all his performances are to be considered as a useless waste of time. If someone always sees Krishna inside and out, then it is said to be understood that he has surpassed all austerities and penances for self-realization. And if after executing all kinds of penances and austerities, one cannot see Krishna inside and outside, then he has executed his performances uselessly. Spontaneous attraction to Krishna, which is said to be due to the extraordinary mercy of the Lord, can be placed under two headings. One is profound veneration of the greatness of the Lord and the other is one's being automatically attracted to Krishna without any extraneous Consideration in the Naraj Pancharatra, it is said that if on account of profound veneration for the greatness of the Supreme Lord, one attains a great affection and steady love for him, one is certainly assured of attaining the four kinds of fashion of liberation, namely achieving the same bodily features as Lord, achieving the same opulences as the Lord, dwelling on the planet where the Lord is residing and attaining eternal association with the Lord. The fashion of liberation is completely different from the Mayavad liberation which is simply a matter of being merged into the effulgence of the Lord. In the Narad Pancharatra, pure unalloyed devotional service is explained as being without any motive for personal benefit. If a devotee is continuously in love with the Lord Krishna and his mind is always fixed upon him, that devotional attitude will prove to be only means of attracting the attention of the Lord. In other words, a Vaishnava who is incessantly thinking of the form of the Lord is to be known as a pure Vaishnava. Generally, a devotee who has achieved the causeless mercy of the Lord on account of following the strict rules and regulations of devotional service becomes attracted by the supreme greatness of the Lord, by the transcendental beauty of the Lord and by the spontaneous execution of devotional service. To be more clear, by executing the regulative principles of devotional service, one can fully appreciate the transcendental beauty of the Lord. 
in any case such exalted positions are possible only by the extraordinary mercy of the lord upon the devotees association with the pure devotees although many different processes for developing love of god had have been explained so far shri roop goswami now gives us the general description of how one can best achieve such high position the beginning of ecstatic love of god had is basically faith there are many societies and associations of pure devotees and if someone with just a little faith begins to associate with such societies his advancement to pure de- devotional service is rapid the de- influence of a pure devotee is such that if someone comes to associate with him with a little faith one gets a chance of hearing about the lord from authoritative scriptures like bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam and thus by the mercy of the lord who is situated in everyone's heart one gradually develops his faith in the descriptions of such authoritative scriptures this is the first stage of association with pure devotees in the second stage after one becomes little advanced and mature he automatically offers to follow the principles of devotional service under the guidance of the pure devotees and accepts him as the spiritual master in the next stage under the guidance of the spiritual master the devotee executes regulative devotional service and as a result of such activities he becomes freed from all unwanted occupations when he is freed from unwanted occupations his faith becomes steadily fixed and he develops transcendental taste for devotional service then attachment then ecstasy and in the last stage there is pure love of godhead these are the different stages of the development of pure love only the most fortunate persons can achieve such success in life those who are simply academic students of the vedic scriptures cannot appreciate how such development takes place in the narad pancharatra Lord Shiva therefore tells Parvati my dear supreme goddess you may know that from me that any person who has developed the ecstasy of love for the supreme personality of godhead and who is always merged in transcendental bliss on account of this love cannot even perceive the material distress or happiness coming from the body of or mind the affection and the dealings of love that are different branches of the original tree of love precede many varieties of affectionate manifestations that will not be discussed here these different manifestations have been described by sanatan goswami in his bhagavatamrita although the subject of such affections and dealings of love is very confidential sanatan goswami has described them very explicitly shri rupa goswami thus concludes the first division of bhakti rasamrit sindhu offering up his treatise for the transcendental pleasure of sanatan goswami who has established the transcendental beauty and of gopal bhat ko swami shri ragunath bhat ko swami and ragunath das ko swami it appears from this statement that the great shri lajiv ko swami was not yet active when bhakti rasamrit sindhu was written the sense the bhakti vedant summary study of the first division of bhakti rasamrit sindhu up to the descriptions of ecstatic love of godhead which are to follow next next time we'll start reading from the part 2 the nectar devotion thank you for joining hari om tat sat hari krishna